Elon Musk's SpaceX is gearing up to launch the Crew 10 mission on Wednesday, sending four astronauts to the International Space Station. This mission is a big deal as it will replace the current team and bring home NASA astronauts Sunita Williams and Butch Wilmore, who've been living in space for over eight months now. The Crew 10 mission will take off from NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida at 5.18 a.m. Indian Standard Time on Wednesday. The trusty Dragon spacecraft, which has flown several missions before, will carry astronauts Anne McLean, Nicole Ayers, Takuya Onishi and Kirill Peskov on their journey. Remember viewers, NASA astronaut Sunita Williams and her crewmate Butch Wilmore blasted off aboard Boeing Starliner on the 5th of June 2024, which was last year, for what was supposed to be just an eight-day mission. But things did not go as planned. After a successful docking at the International Space Station, early signs of thruster malfunctions and helium leaks were detected, forcing a postponement of their return trip. Engineers scrambled to access the propulsion system and Williams and Wilmore had to adapt to a new reality altogether. They integrated into the ISS crew, pitching in on scientific experiments and maintenance tasks. In September, Williams took command of the ISS, overseeing operations and coordinating crew schedules. Despite the challenges, they found time to celebrate special occasions all in space, including Diwali and even Thanksgiving. Williams even shared her excitement about living in space with students at an elementary school. Hello. Joining us on the show tonight is Dr. Kishore Roy, who will talk to us about the kind of medical complexities that these astronauts might experience once they're back. Sir, thanks very much for speaking to Republic. And again, my question remains the same. What are the medical complexities that we're eyeing in terms of uh, the astronauts coming back? We have to understand how safe we are on the Earth. If we are gone by uh, the, the so-called Panchabhuta Earth, water, air, um, uh, then space and the water. Okay, and uh, we are extremely well protected in the Earth. Uh, earth and also, uh, Earth is the only place in this solar system where the living and the life exists. Okay, this is the fundamental thing what we have to understand. And the next pe best thing what has been done by the humans is only the ISS. ISS is only in the you know trying to simulate the conditions of the Earth so that the astronauts can live peacefully and they can survive in space. But even then there are challenges. There is you know, microgravity. So this microgravity results in what is called a space flight related neuroosculor syndrome, where, uh, where you can see because of the microgravity, the muscle atrophy happens, then the bone density loses uh, one to 2% per uh, you know, month, and there will be fluid shifts, and then there is potential uh, problem with uh, you know visual problems then there is uh, uh, the distribution of the uh, fluids in the body which happens and which also affects the uh, you know physical mental psychological condition of the body we must understand that up to 80 kilometers is the earth atmosphere where we are very well protected by ionosphere troposphere chromosphere and uh, the thermosphere which uh, really takes care of the human being requirement. Beyond that is the space where the, the space station is located and it is a, extremely uh, you know, exposed to the radiation. Whatever you do, you are only trying to simulate it. You cannot do 100% what is there on the Earth in the, the space station. Therefore, there are leakages of uh, the radiation, which will also affect the, uh, the living cells of uh, the uh, you know, astronauts who are staying in the space. The, uh, the journey was for uh, six days. Please understand that it was only for six to ten days from uh, June uh, 5th 
and they should have come back by 15 16 but it has gone extended by nine months plus now uh, nine months and counting it is the 10th month it is really really something which uh, psychologically also it affects it is something like i shouldn't call it as a jail but uh, you know somebody who is restricted movement and you are floating in the air and uh, you are not able to ground there is a gravity in earth where uh, it regulates the entire system the, in uh, the space you can have uh, you know the uh, the heart getting affected the lungs getting affected the uh, the the ma major organs like kidney and the other organs affected and uh, uh, you know sort of uh, deterioration starts happening in the space therefore it is uh, okay that you know you can stay you know stay in space station for a few days maybe a few months and nine months plus is too long a time therefore Definitely, definitely, the way you can see her on the TV and they can see her directly addressing, you can see her, she has shrunken, shrunken in her body, the mass has reduced and definitely the bone density would have got affected and she will also have problems in terms of stabilizing herself when, when she lands on Earth. Therefore, right. when she lands on Earth, the type of, uh, you know, right. uh, rehabilitation she has to undergo is really, really tremendous, which is unimaginable. At least, for, you know, generally it takes about three to right. four months for any astronaut to recover, even if they stay for a few days. And having stayed for, there for nine to ten months, it is going to be a long journey for her to get recovered when she is back on Earth. The right, first sir. problem itself will be that when she lands on Earth, to just to stand up stable on the Earth itself is a, you know, a big issue because nine months she has been floating in the air. Therefore, we must necessarily understand that such a well-protected Earth, the Mother Earth, so-called Mother Earth, where we are getting everything free, and in ISS with such a you know you know complex technology, also it is going to be a challenge for any astronaut, and such right, a long sir. period really going to be a challenge. Right, sir. In fact, uh, Doctor. S.V. Sharma, who is also the former ISRO director, I also want to ask you what are the complexities that we think we can be eyeing in terms of the very mission, crew 10 mission, even headed, uh, being headed to the uh, ISS? Crew 9 mission has already gone and it has dogged on to the uh, International Space Station. So the plan is that to bring these four astronauts back uh, yeah, through the you know crew 9 module and once the crew 10 module uh, docks in that is ISS has two ports uh, one in one on the east and another on the west and the east port is already docked with uh, the crew 9 and the uh, west port will be docked by crew 10 therefore it is really essential that the crew 10 has to take off and then it has to uh, reach and then dock onto the ISS then only the crew 9 can um, can uh, you know uh, come back because this is a replacement uh, so you know team which has to manage uh, ISS. There are four people right now in um, ISS that is International Space Station to man and manage the um, ISS and now those people have to be replaced and these people have to come back. Therefore, the biggest challenge is that uh, crew 10 has to take off and then uh, successfully you know dock. I don't think it is a challenge because uh, the crew uh, the series has been very successfully go going into space and docking successfully and uh, then the crew 9 uh, uh, has to bring back the four uh, astronauts who are already uh, there in uh, the uh, in the space station but uh, uh, we all we wish all the very best for the crew 10 success because the, the success of crew 10 only can bring right, back sir. crew 9 crew which is there in ISS right sir thanks very much for speaking to republic and getting us all those insights but for now viewers were also being joined by dr kishore roy who will talk to us about the kind of medical complexities that these ast astronauts might experience once they're back sir the floor is all yours yes once uh, they are back uh, you know like uh, generally what happens it takes a lot of time to recoup to the new condition which were there previously now what happens once they land in already they are having too much muscle atrophy too much calcium has gone by from their body and um, i mean uh, it may take around uh, months to you know like recover from the current situation so there are two type of aspects which what happens in these uh, kind of uh, those who come from the uh, aerospace i mean for after a very long time one is physiological stress and another is psychological stress so in the physiology you see from the starting from the skin to the heart to the bone everything uh, goes for a toss every physiological aspect goes for a toss 
and it takes months to recover from the current state and uh, as far as the psychological uh, things are concerned psychology also is a very important part and as because they i mean although she is very mentally strong but still you know like uh, adaptation to the new situations it is also at times uh, takes a very long time for joining us on Republic and getting all of these details chalked out for us and our viewers. We really appreciate your time.